as a behavior analyst, I have not used behavioral contracts much at all. So today we are talking about a book uh, called Let's Make a Contract. And it's a short excerpt from an interview I did with Dr. Bill Heward, who's very famous in the autism ABA world, and his wife, Dr. Jill Dardag, who is a seasoned professional as well. They wrote a great book, very readable and actionable. So today I'm sharing a little clip from that video blog all about behavioral contracts. Welcome back to another video blog. I'm Dr. Mary Barbera, autism mom, behavior analyst, and best-selling author. Each week, I'm bringing you some, some videos, some short podcast snippets, um, anything that I think you as a parent or professional could use to learn how to turn things around in your life and the life of your child and clients. I serve kids with autism, but also toddlers who are showing delays and differences, um, who are delayed speaking, who are um, having potentially excessive tantrums, having some um, uh, signs of autism, ADHD. So it doesn't matter if your child or clients are actually diagnosed with autism, my materials can help. So today, I am sharing a short excerpt from podcast number 168 with Dr. Bill Heward and Dr. Jill Dardig. And um, they wrote this really awesome book and, and I read it before it came out in print. And um, hopefully you enjoy this short snippet. So Bill, why don't you quickly give our listeners like one of the, like something specific, like you did in, from the book, like sure. a clear how, what the, what the problem was, what the contract was, what, what didn't work about the contract, maybe something related to a child with autism or some developmental uh, disability so that, you know, our listeners could, um, you know, kind of put it together. Do the morning contract and then this, then the uh, homeschool. Okay. Um, Let's talk about uh, in the the story is called by myself uh, okay. in in the book, and okay, this is that on? this is on page seventy seven. Okay, and um, a single parent Erica Cole, and her ten year old son Connor uh, with autism. Okay, and um, here's how we introduce the story. Each each of these stories has a little kind of a, not a well a teaser or a trailer. It says, Connor, a fourth grader with autism, is in the same class as Jeff Perry and Martina. All these stories are tied together. The families and kids know one another. Connor has trouble getting ready for school, which makes mornings hectic and stressful for him and his mom. Will a contract help get their days off to a better start? And um, the opening illustration shows Erica and Connor, the mom and so on. And sitting next to her is um, Krista. We introduce in this chapter a behavior analyst. We don't go into any technical detail about what that entails. We just said, we say Krista, a behavior analyst who helps kids with their behavior, was visiting Connor and is saying, how are things going? And then the mom says, it's going pretty well, but mornings are our trouble. You know, he doesn't get ready in time. And we, we end up both, we're stressed and day's not off to a good start. And of course, Krista, the behavior analyst says, well, I had success using contracts with a lot of the families and children I work with. What do you think? And they talk about it and they come up with, uh, they really kind of end up with it, you know, a task analysis. What would be the steps of getting ready? And they identify uh, four basic steps for Connor, um, getting dressed, uh, having his uh, breakfast, cereal and milk, brushing his teeth, washing his face and being at the door at 745 with his backpack on. Connor has some um, visual reading skills, but they, uh, he's also had success using some uh, visual activity scanner schedules. It talks about taking little photos of him, he can vet, he loves Legos. So the reward is earning these little Lego characters. And um, 
he he has a Lego that he can attach by Velcro in the morning to keep, okay, I've gotten dressed. What do I do next? And so forth. And then uh, down here, little Lego stickers. We call this a task record, a visual way to, uh, to take data, really, to see both for the child and parent, how's the contract uh, going? And um, that, work, that one works out pretty well. At the end of, these, uh, of each story, we have what we call let's talk questions. And it's just three or four things, kind of conversation starters to kickstart a, a parent might discuss with their, uh, with their child. And here it says, what are your mornings? What are mornings like at your house? Um, what were mornings like for Connor and his mom before the contract? Do you think the photos on Connor's contract helped him? How did Connor feel when he got himself ready for school and so forth? And then if I could do just one more, the, our last story continues. This is a second story with uh, Connor uh, and his mom. And now mom, Erica and behavior analyst Krista are meeting with Janelle Gardner. We, th these are fictional stories, but they're based on you know, our experiences and, you know, a conglomeration of many families we've had an opportunity to learn with and from, but so we, we, I, uh, so the teacher's there as well. And, and uh, they talk about, uh, mom reports that Connor's kind of sad. He comes home from school often and he says, I don't have friends and I, I wish I had more friends. And so the, uh, the three adults, they talk about how they might help him with that. And they identify having conversations with classmates, try to help him learn to initiate and hold a conversation. And so again, in behavior analysis, special ed speak, it's really a task analysis. There's no technical language whatsoever in the book, but what's identified on the contract are these four things. So the task is talk to another student. When do you do this? Each day at school, during lunch, recess, free time, or group activities. How well? This is a critical part of a behavior contract of helping both child and parent uh, agree on um, what the task uh, entails. Practice three to five minutes with students selected by the teacher. Start a conversation with another student. Tell Ms. Gardner, that's his teacher, how the talks went. Take Miss Gardner's note home to mom and report to mom. So what we've got here really is a homeschool contract where again, teacher, family, behavior analyst, all collaborating um, uh, on this contract uh, to help uh, Connor, the ultimate goal is to make friends, but as a step towards that to have, uh, have conversations. And that story ends. Like uh, all of them a, happy a happy ending and he jumps off the bus and his mom's crying. And he says, oh, Perry invited me to his birthday party and he likes baseball just like I do and had to yeah. get baseball in there. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's great. I, I think that helps our, our listeners and a lot of people will just be listening, but Bill is showing some examples from the book. So if you want to hop on and actually watch the podcast, or uh, fast forward it so you can see what he's showing. And that's helpful too sometimes. But I think you did a good job of explaining. So even if people are riding in their car or exercising, they'll be able to, to get the idea. So with all of your contracts though, you do have the child and the adults both sign, right? Mm -hmm. Except we do have one chapter where the young boy makes a self-contract okay. and he signs for, for mm. uh, you know both lines. <laughs> Because oh. he's the one who's motivated. He wants to improve a skill, which okay. is a mathematical skill. He's a fourth grader also. And um, that's the only case I think we have of a self-contract. Yeah, yeah. But we're trying to show in the book that it's contracts are not only reserved for bad behaviors or problems. If you have a goal, a behavioral goal, some skill you want to learn, you can use contract for that as well. Yeah. And I was thinking as I was looking at the book, because you sent me a copy, which I appreciate that, you know, on page 104, where you are talking about the um, contract to uh, make friends and to talk, he he's 
checking off or somebody's checking off and Xing off. And I was thinking this really goes along with self-monitoring, which is another mm -hmm. ABA technique that we really never discussed. But, you know, basically, if you are at the language ability and the cognitive ability that you can actually mark off, you know, if you want to lose weight, writing down what you ate and checking it off and um, right. weighing and measuring your food or weighing and measuring yourself at, at a certain interval, you know, if you set your mind to it, and I'm glad you mentioned the the self contract, you could you could change your behavior, but it yep. is going to rely. And if you don't write it down and you don't measure it, it's not going to improve. Mm -hmm. yep. One other question about that, I have a couple questions. Is um, I see this is like uh, this contract, at least on this paper, goes for like three weeks. Is, is there? You know, I find that if it's just a contract forever, it's not going to work. So, so what is the time limit, and and does that depend on the behavior and the and the reinforcement? It depends on the behavior and the reinforcer, just as you're saying. Um, we don't see contracts as a permanent solution. They're not. It's a transition to get you from point A, where you're struggling or you have a goal, to point B, B where, you're, where you're doing better, you're doing well. And then the idea is to phase out the contract. So it's, it's a relatively short-term solution to a problem, but will have greater effects. It can be generalized into the future for future gains. I hope you enjoyed that short uh, excerpt from podcast number 168. You can watch the whole podcast um, or listen to it on any podcast app. And uh, for more information to learn more about how you can turn things around with our course and community, attend a free workshop at marybarbera.com forward slash workshop. If you like this video, I hope you'll comment, share it, give me a thumbs up and uh, help me spread the word to other parents and professionals. Have a good one. And I'll see you right here next week.